I haven't read my notes on this, and I completely forgot what I was going to say. Hey everyone, Fish Shop Matt here. So, after a chat with uh, MD Fish Tanks and a couple of the customers when he was in the other day, we got onto feeding and how much the customer feeds. So over the years I've had loads and loads of obviously people with problems and questions and issues. The main one I would say is really is people overfeeding. There is so much joy I suppose you would say in feeding your fish that that's the one thing you do. No one gets excited about oh yeah I'm gonna clean out my filter this weekend, excellent. No, no, we don't. We get excited at feeding time. We get excited to see our fish come out. We get excited to see them happy and to see them feeding. And I'd say that is one of the main reasons that people have a problem with. So in this video, I'm going to cover sort of the main basics and maybe a few more points on feeding and how to keep overfeeding in your aquarium to a minimum. We're all guilty of overfeeding our aquariums. It's inevitable. You know, we uh, see the fish come up to the surface and we want to feed them all. So it's just inevitable that you are going to overfeed your aquarium at some point. So, I suppose feeding is the easiest place to start really. How much you're feeding, what you're feeding and trying not to overfeed. Now, most types of food on the aquarium industry sort of standard have feed three or four times a day as much as they will eat in a certain time frame. And generally this works fine when your aquarium is lightly stocked, well filtered, um, planted. If everything's with you and everything's sort of pushing you in the right direction, you'll get away with it. But trying to feed that much, that often, is more than likely going to lead to a problem unless you are top sort of on your maintenance, unless you're really on top of it. Now really there is no definitive answer in how much you need to feed or how often, everyone's tanks are gonna be different. Everyone's sort of feeding regimes are gonna be different. The fish you've got in your tank are gonna be different. Filtration's gonna be different. There's too many variables to cover everyone's tanks under one rule. And that's the one thing with fish keeping. Everyone tries to put one rule across the whole of fish keeping. And generally you can't do it. It really doesn't work. Well, it doesn't for me anyway. One thing I would say with feeding and the easiest way is to get used to your aquarium and how much your aquarium can take and how much your aquarium eats and obviously how much your filtration can deal with. Otherwise, if you go chucking in a whole ton of food and your aquarium can't deal with it, you're going to be cleaning that for the next few hours. Whereas if you go little and often, it's going to make it easier. The way I do it at home and it makes it easier for um, sort of children and friends to feed my aquarium if they need to, is I use a spoon. Now you can see, if it focuses, maybe. It's got different measurements that I've marked onto it. And I know roughly that those two measurements will feed my aquariums at home. That smaller one, you can see there. So the lower one, that's generally the flake food. I crush it up a little bit, obviously, to fit in there. Um, and the bigger one is generally when I put uh, algae wafers and catfish tablets on top of the flake food. So it's much easier to be able to consistently feed with something measurement rather than just the pinch of your fingers because some days I don't look and in it goes and oh that was a bit too much so yeah really try and use something like this now if you're getting to the point where there's a pile of food sat in the bottom of the aquarium like this behind me here so you can see there they're working through it quite well but if that pile was to stay there any longer um, and sort of sit there for a good few minutes I'd be getting that out getting rid of it and probably putting fresh in maybe in an hour or so but probably not letting them feed letting them pick up any particles their eyes are going to be much smaller than ours they're going to be able to see the smaller particles of food that are left over hanging around the aquarium so as I was saying little and often is the best way to feed your aquarium if you feed them in one massive hit your filter is going to have to deal with all those waste levels at the same time Whereas, if you spread it out over the course of a day, you know, even if you do the scoop idea, have that amount of food set aside for your day, and you spread that out over the course of a day, your filter isn't going to have to deal with a massive peak in food and peak in waste levels in the sort of really short time frame of feeding them that amount. Whereas if you do it little and often, the filter should be able to catch up with itself quite quickly. So last thing on feeds, the old saying fits. Buy cheap, buy twice. 
I can guarantee that the better quality foods on the market, you're going to be able to, well, I say that, not you, but your fish are going to be able to digest it better. They're going to be able to use the nutrients in there. And the problem being, if they're not able to use all those nutrients and it just goes out the back end of them, that's nutrients that are going to go into your aquarium and cause, you know, ammonia spikes, nitrite spikes, nitrate spikes. You don't know. You don't know what it's going to cause. And then you're going to be starting to suffer with algae and ultimately it's going to make your life harder. So let's feed this tank here. Now this tank, as you've probably known, is MD Fish Tank's one that he set up in the store. Um, I've just freaked them all out because I've just messed around with the filter. But yeah, so there's 150 green neons. There's a group of Corydoras in here. Uh, what else is in there? There's a group of, oh, there's a huge cleanup crew. So there's um, Amano shrimps. So you can see some of them just down in here. So yeah, we've got a group of Amano shrimps. There's a group of Otto Sinkless in here. And then there's also the pair of Epistogramma Elizabethae, which I don't know where they've disappeared off to at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I'll show you quickly what we would feed on a normal feeding on this tank. So what we're going to use here is this little trio of foods. Now we've got the Bug Bites Tropical Formula, the Bug Bites Tropical Flake, and the Bug Bites Algae Crisps. Those three foods, in theory, would feed all the fish in this aquarium. But, as I say in every video, the difference in foods that you can get, the more variety of foods you can get, the better. You know, frozen foods, other flake foods, colour enhancing flakes. The more foods you feed, the more, well, the easier it's going to be for your fish to pick up on something that they like and you're not going to have any issues. So there's all your foods that you're going to be feeding. Now, these two are... Uh old pots of mine as you can see i've used a little bit of each of them this one's a brand new pot actually so yeah that's quite cool i've not used this flake i've used a color enhancing flake before but i haven't actually used this one yet now my discus scoop from home with that first marker uh, is probably going to be a bit much for this tank but we will see let's let's put a bit of food in and let's see so for these guys like i say a tiny little pinch like that really is going to be sufficient that's all I'm going to use for those little guys. You can always put more in later. It's a nightmare to get it back out when you've chucked it in. Now with the algae wafer, I'm probably just going to pop one of these in today. See how they get on. I might crack it in half. No, I'm going to keep it whole. Then I'm just going to put a little sprinkle of this tropical granule. Now this is the smaller size one. They do a bigger size one as well. And that is it. Now I've made a mess of the top of the tank, but that is it. That is all I'm going to feed in this tank today. Like I say, if they finish that off really, really quickly, I can always add more. But if I put right up to here and put it in there, it's going to look like a snowstorm has hit the aquarium. And then it's a nightmare for me to get it out. Once that food works its way in amongst here and starts breaking down in behind all this wood, that's where the issues and the algae is going to come from, is when all that hidden food is sort of, yeah, trapped in behind your hardscape and in behind your plants. So let's check it in. Let's see how they go. Now that is it. That's all the food we're going to put in here. There you go, you can see already the green neons are coming out. I look, there's the Elizabeth, eh? Elizabeth, eh? Has come out to have a look and to inspect some of the food. Now the algae wafer, I don't know where the algae wafer, oh, it's right in front of me, look. The algae wafer's just dropped down here. So that Amano shrimp is getting first dibs on the algae wafer. But you can see all the green neons, look, are darting about at the back and finishing that food off. They'll get rid of that and they'll eat all of that really quickly. And like I say, if I need to put more in later, I can. But this way, I don't need to go searching for the four dozen algae wafers I chucked in and the fistful of flake food. One little thing that I forgot to say actually was that you can treat or you can say a fish is a little bit like a conveyor belt. As gross as this is going to sound, what goes in the front pushes stuff out the back. Now, if they haven't used up all the nutrients or broken down the food, what's coming out the back is gonna be pretty much fish food. You know, if you've not given them the time to digest it, if it's not a good enough quality food and it hasn't got the right nutrients in, it's gonna be coming out of the back end and it's gonna cause you grief. So getting the largest filter that you can afford is gonna make your life easier. Internals and externals all have their place in the market. You know, some people's tanks just aren't big enough to take an external. But really, the bigger filter you've got, the easier it is going to be for you. 
So as I said, externals like these are always going to outcompete your internals like these little chaps up here. But as long as you stock your aquarium to the size of your aquarium and keep with the right number of fish, both of them should sort of, yeah, keep your aquarium clean and should be sufficient to what you need it to do. Now, a little addition that you could put, or a couple of little additions that I've got here, an air pump or a circulation pump. Now, these little guys, what you'll find is an air pump will obviously blow bubbles into the aquarium, will provide extra circulation, so we'll pick up any debris that's behind the rocks, well, depending on where you place the air stones, and we'll move it and keep it in suspension. The same with the uh, little uh, water movement pump here. That one will just pump water around the aquarium and it will pick up all that debris that's in those dead spots. Now, the good thing with that is that you'll find, well, hopefully, that will keep the muck and the fish waste in suspension for longer, which means your filter should be able to catch it and it will mean less dead spots where muck can build up in your aquarium. So regular maintenance is also key for keeping your aquarium clean and obviously stopping any issues with overfeeding. The cleaner your aquarium is, the more it's going to be able to deal with it. Regular filter maintenance and keeping those, you know, biological media parts um, clean so that bacteria can inhabit them is a real key thing to be doing. You don't have to go mad, you don't have to be doing it every week, but yeah, really, that, that maintenance on your filter is going to keep everything running. Now... Obviously, there's loads of tools for cleaning the aquarium that you can see here. There's gravel vacuums, there's sponges. Make your life easy. Get as much equipment as you can that's going to make your life easy. You know, buy a gravel cleaner, but extend the hose so that it goes out the door and it means that you don't have to worry about carting buckets backwards and forwards. Always remember to keep one bucket, though, to clean your filter media out with. Because, yeah, don't clean it out in tap. Top tip, don't ever clean your filter media out in tap water just kills off all your bacteria you'll be starting from stage one but yeah make your life easy get as much equipment that's going to make your life easy as you can now there are hundreds of different liquids out there you can see a little selection of them behind us on our shelf here they all do different things well no they don't i fell alive they're the companies sort of stick to a main frame of treatment you know everyone will have a dechlorinator everyone will have a bacterial booster there is a main sort of group of treatments that all of them will have but there are more now i'll try and cover them in a later video because there's too many different treatments and too many different things to cover in one little video i'll be here for 35 minutes talking about liquids but the main two that i would be looking at are dechlorinator and bacteria booster so a dechlorinator is as it says on the tin it's a dechlorinator now this is our own brand aquacare Obviously, you guys will probably know Fluval and Tetra. All of, these all of these dechlorinators do the exact same thing. Some of them are stronger than others. Some of them work better than others for certain people. Personally, it's just a personal preference on what you like using. Then, with regards to the Bacteria Booster, again, our own brand, BioBoost. Now, this is going to put the seed of life into your aquarium, and it's going to help your filter to maintain its bacteria level and break down all those nasties and all those nasty wastes. And again, fluval cycle, uh, stress zyme, you've got quick start at the end there that should focus. There we go, quick start at the end there. And these all promote the healthy living and healthy bacteria in your aquarium. So there we are, guys. Hopefully that gives you a little insight into how I feed my aquariums and how I look at feeding in general in an aquarium. It's interesting when you start to break everything down and start to think about things a little bit of a different way, how easier it can make your life with regards to aquarium keeping. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you've enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed it, like, comment. Oh, actually, saying that, saying that, if you've got any other ideas or any tips for me for feeding, because there's hundreds of you watching this, and I bet you've all got different ways of feeding and different ideas. Chuck them in the comments. Really good ones. I'll pin them to the top. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we can build a little sort of group of comments of other tips and other pro tips for feeding. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, I swear I just said something wrong, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. Fingers crossed you have. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of those good things that these YouTubers need to say nowadays. I'm not a YouTuber, I'm a manager of a fish shop, and I love it. But until next time, have a good one. Enjoy the weather. It's raining here, so I better open up the shop because, uh, yeah, I've still not turned everything on. Peace.